Suppose you have the following index collection of sets. So now we're going to talk about the indexed collection of sets. What am I going to do? I'm going to introduce a couple of sets for you. For each positive integer, like I, I'm going to define A sub I to be equal to the set of all real values such that X is bounded between these two fractions, one over I and negative one over I. How do we define this? It's actually an open interval. A sub I is an open <clears throat> interval. A sub I is open interval with lower bound one negative one over I and the upper bound positive one over I. Open interval. Okay, very good. Now I want you to find the union between a sub one, A sub two, and A sub three. Also, I want you to find the intersection between these three sets. A sub one, intersection A sub two, intersection A sub three. So one by one, step, step by step, we're going to build each one of these using the definition. My definition of the union. A1, union. A2, union. A3 is the set of all elements, x, such that x is in at least in one of these sets. All right. X is in at least one of A1 or A2 or A3 or in all of them. The intersection counts. Remember how we defined the union? So what are we trying to find? We are trying to find the following the union between A1. But what is A1? A1 is negative one comma one, union A2, which is negative a half and a half, union A3, which is negative a third, a third, right? We're gonna try to find the union between these three sets. So, okay. Take a look at the real line. This is nothing but the real line. So on the real line, remember that we have all integers and X is real value. So we're working on the real line. This is my X axis or just R, right? Suppose we have the zero in its middle. And I have one, negative one, and two, negative two, and so on. So the very first set is open interval, negative one and one. So it's going to be open interval, negative one to one. This is my A1. Okay. What A2? Negative a half and a half. So this is negative a half, a half. This is my A2. So red guy is going to be A sub two. 
You can remember that zero is just right here. And A3, what is A3? A3 is going to be negative a third to a third. A3 is roughly here, a third to a third. This is A sub three. I'm not looking for the intersection. I'm looking for the union, remember that. Any element that is in A1 or in A2 or in A3 or in the intersection. Okay, so all elements that are in A1, which is the larger set, includes the rest of them. And of course, here you have the intersection, which is the common elements, but we are looking for the union. So this guy is nothing but negative one, two, one. Now for the intersection, when it comes to intersection, what does it look like? For the intersection, you have A1, intersection A2, intersection A3, which is the set of all elements like X such that X is in all A1 and A2 and A3 in all of them. It must be a common member or a set of common elements. It means that you're looking at the intersection between these open intervals. Okay, look at this, what's the intersection? What is the set that includes all of the members in all of these sets? The smallest set is going to be including all members common in all of these sets. So finding union and intersection is not very difficult. Just one last thing. If I ask you to find the union, if I keep continue going to A1, A2, A3, A4 to A infinity. What happens there? These are the types of questions that you should be asking. These are the basis for mathematical analysis. It's good to see them here. If I ask you to find the union of A sub I's, I start from one, and it goes to infinity. What is this guy? And if I ask you to find the intersection as you keep going, AI, I starts from one to infinity. What are these look like? So what's the meaning of that? It means that you have A1, union A2, union A3, union A4, and you keep going. What is this union? And what about the intersection? A1, intersection A2, intersection A3, and if I keep going, what happens to these sets? So take a look. By using the definition, this guy is equal to the set of all X values and such that X is in one of these AIs, at least one of them. X is in at list one of these AIs. So as I mentioned, A1, union A2, union A3, or if you want to take a look at some of them, negative one and one, union, negative a half, a half, union, negative a third, a third, and the rest of them. It keeps going toward if you take the limit as i goes to infinity, this is zero, okay? It's going towards zero. But the union includes, so if you take elements, it should include the lower bound, the closest numbers to a lower bound and upper bound as well. So this is going to be negative one and one again, because it's a union. Well, what about the intersection? If you take the intersection, it's going to be the set of all of X values. X is in all of these elements, all of AIs. What's the meaning of that? It means that we have 
A1, intersection A2, intersection A3, and so on. But if you take a look at the elements, as you continue AIs, as I goes to infinity, one over I goes to zero. Am I right? So this guy is equal to the origin for the zero itself. So the intersection is not in the form of an open set. This is just one element, which is zero. 